Thank you very much, Gabriel. That's right. Yes. Thank you for welcoming us uh, here. Thank you, Father Jeff, for your talk on Saint Francis. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, it reminded me so something I was not thinking since a long time. So um, beautiful, also um, the the strength that Saint Francis found in his heart to overcome this aversion for the lepers, which we, which we, we could find that in another way. Uh, us, maybe we have some aversion for some people, and, and so to, to find this compassion, this mercy of God in us, so that's uh, interesting how, how you, you, you saw it also. And I, I, I would like to share other things about what you say, but I will, I will share first something maybe connect with, with what you say. Um, something of our community, so we are the, the poor friars on the internet, they know us as poor friars. Uh, the official name is Little Friars and Little Nuns of Jesus and Mary, so it's a little long. Uh, so we try to just abbreviate. And, um, um, our founder, uh, his name is uh, Father Volantino Verde. Um, for Spanish speaker, I can understand. In Italian, it means green flyer. <laughs> so he's called a green flyer. It's his religious name because uh, in practice, um, he is called to invite people to uh, through in his, in his way to be a, a flyer with his life, you know, an invitation to the, the parties that never ends. We know that also St. Francis used to really enjoy a lot of parties with his friends before. <laughs> Uh, to start his life as a friar, obviously. <laughs> uh, in Assisi, uh, he, before the war, you know, he was uh, very trying to enjoy his time <laughs> on this friendly, like, like worldly way. Right. So um, that's the same thing for our father. Actually, he had a nightclub and he, he used to do a lot of money with it in South uh, Italy, Sicily. And so the Lord helped him to understand okay, well, this party often finish very bad, so try to seek the parties that never ends. And that's, that's how step by step discovered God in uh, coming out from atheism and say so he has a great, great conversion story. Um, so yes, we are not exactly belonging juridically to the Franciscan. We are a new community born 24 years ago in 1999. Um, but we are inspired by these two uh, spiritualities. First, the first Carmelite for the, the prayer, contemplation, and then the first Franciscan for the poverty, simplicity, and evangelization, itinerance uh, on the road. So right now we are actually doing a pilgrimage hitchhiking from Homa, where we are based, uh, I mean, for the community in the US. Um, Huma, you know, close to New Orleans. Uh, we're in the south of Huma, really close to the coast. And uh, we are going toward Oklahoma City to the Shrine of the Blessed Stanley Rother. Uh, just because we've never been there, we just want to see it. It's new, and there are probably many people going there. And it's an occasion to meet people, learn to also to pass through different universities. So that's why also we pass through um, uh, UTU. I think so. Oh, Jonathan, for welcoming us, really. Thank you very much. And uh, so we go like when Jesus, uh, you, you actually read this passage, so the second one that, that Francis picked up in a certain way was that uh, Sortis Biblique, uh, when Jesus sent his apostle uh, and also his disciples several times in the gospel, without money, without backpack, without bread, without stuff, nothing. <laughs> so trusting in the providence of God, trying all the more to and also doing the experience of the providence of God. Um, this is what we try to do in order to bring people back to the sacraments, especially those already Catholic, we meet on the road who are not frequent in the sacrament, we try to work uh, with them, <laughs> I mean, to give them some invitation uh, as far as possible. But we also try to listen to the suffering that people encounter, their question, their worries, and whatever, and to give them According to the step they are in their spiritual lives, they are atheists, trying to help them to find a way to believe in God. Uh, if 
is through science, uh, science analyzing the miracles or other things like that. If they are already in a religion like Muslim, we try to speak about what the Quran say about Jesus and, and, and step by step uh, make connection with with Jesus and with his church. If they are obviously the evangelical, uh, try also to 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 reason on the history of Christian and see how how we can have more fullness from the beginning, starting with Jesus, Peter, and so on, the apostolic succession. So, um, I will say, I will also explain very briefly also how St. Francis impacted my life, but I want to say how St. Francis impacts our charism. I would say it's the first saint who really impacted our founder, most largely for our charism, is the main, I will say. We have four saints who inspire our charism. Francis the first. We have also Saint Therese of Lisieux for the, um, the childlike spirit. Uh, Saint Maximilian Kolb for the diffusion of the gospel through um, the means of communication. And also Padre Pio for his devotion to Our Lady and uh, the priesthood. Um, but Saint Francis for poverty, and itinerance and simplicity. So, um, I would say that uh, this style of life, for example, Father started his speech with the poverty, which is something that strikes people when they speak about St. Francis. And our poverty, so we are a community who live, so we call Poor Friars, it's our nickname on the internet, and uh, we live really without money. So uh, us consecrate so brought uh, friars and nuns. It's about twenty-four years that the community was created. We we live really without money. We don't have money. We don't have a bank account in our community. We have some lay people, uh, groups of prayer, who uh, help us when there is a, a big need. But mostly, if it's for food or other, mostly people bring us boats. Sometimes we can ask also when we need something. And we have friends uh, uh, around the community who, who really so we really, we experience the providence, especially when we go hitchhiking, so we go without nothing, and we really experience the providence uh, through uh, many ways. I would say that poverty. I was thinking about six different steps, six, six different elements in which we can grow through poverty. Um, first thing is. Uh, the prayer, as our founder say, it gives us more time for the prayer. We don't have too much time to think about how we can uh, have to deal with this or this uh, bill and things. And so it gives them some time for the prayer relations with God. Um, encounter also when we hitchhike, well, we don't have a car, so we can go on the side of the road and some people stop. So we didn't decide who's going to stop. Uh, but the Lord inspires someone who is a good heart, uh, you want to help. Probably that person really needs also some help. So it's an encounter. He, he gives something. He gave, I mean, he gave his time, his car, and for a moment to help us. And at this point, we would try to give him what he needs, uh, spiritually also, as far as possible. Um, and for this, we need also formation, so poverty help us also in formation, give us more time to dig on the different question uh, when people ask us why is the suffering, why to all these different religion, why I should go to a priest to confess uh, you know, directly with God. So then we need to take the time to, to be formed and to understand um, how to answer him. And that also, the, I would say, poverty is freeing and giving us some time. It also helps us to trust more in in God, uh, because when we hitchhike every, when during this travel, really um, every day uh, encountered in many ways the providence of God. How uh, even having nothing, we uh, the Lord never abandoned us through people of goodwill, people who uh, helped us. And also, I will say the last thing, it helped us to to experience detachment, so to witness uh, the faith in uh, immortal life. Detachment from this world, in order that to open the eyes of people 
and the fact that they will be alive much more, much better. Uh, immortal body, immortal soul, and everything that we can desire will be much, much better in heaven, uh, incorruptible forever. Uh, I was young, uh, no more injustice, no more war, and, and so on. So it's good, uh, but you can also see it. Uh, indicates the resurrection, indicates you know, the victory of Christ over all, all this imperfect world, uh, uh, sinful world. And um, so, yes, I say, um, just to recap uh, prayer, encounter, formation, trust, detachment. Um, so, that means that we don't preach like some heretic, the <laughs> Valdesian. Pauperism. We don't preach a performance of poverty, just poverty for itself. We don't like poverty for itself. It's like the cross. No? The cross, we don't like the cross for itself. We don't like the suffering for itself. We just preach Christ through the poverty. So we like to say that too. Uh, well, Christ was on the cross, so we need to, to speak about that too. And so in that sense, it can be understandable. Poverty is a way to encounter people, no? for us uh, to be in need of things so that we can also respond to the, some needs of people. We'll never encounter, uh, maybe, uh, if we were not on the side of the road, because they diffi difficult, it would be difficult for them to come by themselves in the church, some of them. No? Um, and finish myself, I encounter uh, how St. Francis was impactful in my life was well, very simple. Uh, I was, uh, uh, when I was 17, I uh, uh, received the faith. Uh, I didn't know nothing about God before. I was not educated in the faith. I was not baptized. But through my ex-girlfriend, I, I met some Catholics and I uh, decided to accept baptism after uh, some experience uh, of God. And I read well, the first thing after the gospel, I read the history of St. Francis and his first companion. So I was really struck by the fact that these friars were going in all the world, like in many places of Europe, without money, without bread, without stuff, like the apostles. And I felt in my heart they were just full of joy and a kind of freedom that was joy, that was attracting me. And uh, I felt they were kind of still alive, these people, even though they had they had lived 800 years ago. And uh, I decided I wanted to find a community who will live like them today. And so I started to search. Uh, and uh, after two years and a half, uh, right after my baptism, uh, I was baptized in Easter, and I found the community in July 2004. Uh, so when I, I met them, it was just a, a mirror for me. It was just something I was no more believing. I was find what I was searching, and I found that the Lord brought them actually in France, where I, where I grew up, uh, and I followed them in Italy because the community was was there. So they arrived exactly in the diocese where I was working, among hundred dioceses in France. They arrived in the right diocese where, where I was working. So another providence of God that helped us to, to trust more in Him. Uh, well, we have many other things to say, but uh, I think that that's enough. Except if some people have some question or. to God. There was a priest uh, uh, in Catania, he was saying, uh, who knows if the, if the donkey was uh, carrying uh, Jesus on the Palm Sunday, understood that the applause was not, were not for him, but for, for the one he was carrying. <laughs> and started. Maybe Brother Alexander wanted to say something about uh, how St. Francis impacted his life quickly, or if you have still time, I don't know.
Can you sing good? You all, um, my name is Brother Alexander. Um, I guess, so to start, just with Francis, yeah. Um, so I would say whenever I was getting confirmed in the church, so I was uh, a convert at 22. Um, and so I just read all about John Paul II. And I was like, he's dope. He's going to be my patron saint for con confirmation. Um, but then like a week before confirmation, the thought came up in mind, well, I never actually prayed about that. Um, so I guess I'll do that. And so I started to pray and search all the like lives of the saints and stuff and didn't really find anything. But eventually through some prayer experience, I don't exactly recall how, but the, the story of St. Francis came to mind, particularly when he was before the crucifix of San Damiano and the Lord said to him, like, go and rebuild my church, which you see is in ruin. And that really resonated with my heart. Um, and I was like, yeah, I don't know who that is, but like that, I want that. Um, and so I think like the same day, um, I am at the Catholic Student Center and my friend comes out of mass and she was like, hey, I just offered my mass for your patron saint and St. Francis came to mind. And I was like, whoa, like that's the guy, like that's, and so I just took that as a sign from God of like, okay, I don't know why, but Francis is gonna be my confirmation saint. Um, and so, and I just kind of was more connected with the like, yeah, so God's calling me to rebuild his church. Let's go. Um, but I didn't really ever look into the life of St. Francis very much after that um, until I was, a, I was a focused missionary. And I think it was my second year of training. And I got really sick this weekend. Um, and everyone else was doing something fun. And I was just like sitting in my bed. And I, I was like awake enough to like want to do something but like too tired to like read a book and so or like watch something so i was just like well i could like i could listen to something um and i got informed for some reason and started flicking through what they had and on formed there's this uh, augustine institute audio drama and it's like the life of saint francis and it's actually like having been formed by a community like it's it's not all in order but it's like pretty much faithful to the story of St. Francis. And it it just moved me to tears. Um, and it made me see this man who was like, yeah, fell in love with Christ and was willing to do anything, whatever he said. Um, having, yeah, like the Father said, like having reached the depths of like human suffering and like just basically been like, what's the point of life? Um, and then finding the point of life um, very powerfully and then being willing to do anything for that. Um, so that just really like moved me and especially like his care for the poor and and especially love of the Eucharist um, were these two profound things um, that struck me and then I think as as being formed uh, learning more about like the act from the actual like sources of, of St. Francis um, just seeing also Father mentioned this this profound um, obedience like doing like, yeah, pushing, like being strong and being like, well, no, actually, I think this is what God's calling me to because there was a lot of pushback when he was trying to get his uh, community founded. But but this profound obedience, like there's a story, it's, I think it's true, um, where <laughs> the Pope was like, this rule isn't for men, like you should go preach it to the pigs. And, and he was like obedient and did that. And then the Pope <laughs> saw him afterwards and was like, okay, like, <laughs> this guy's legit. <laughs> um, and so, uh, just to, like, yeah, his profound humility and obedience uh, was something that struck me. Um, and then in addition to having a profound respect for the Eucharist, he would also do something similar for the Word of God. If he ever saw, like, a Bible or something sitting in a place that was unbefitting of the Word of God, he would, like, move it to some place that is more honorable. So, yeah, those are the things that struck me.